Go action. All right, so here we got the, the students working on a refrigeration trainer, and we're going to use a system-dependent process to recover the refrigerant because this one's got a good working compressor, and we can use the king valve when we front seat it to block the line port on the liquid line and pump all the refrigerant instead of through the condenser through the system. So pump it into this tank here. So we're going to hook the yellow hose to the vapor side of the recovery tank, and because we're adding refrigerant to a tank, we want to make sure not to exceed that 80% rule, so we should have a scale on it as well. You go ahead and hook that up, and then when we first get the scale on, the scale should be zeroed out. Let's get that scale on. All right, scale should be zeroed out. And then we'll have to do a little math. What's the thing I'm looking for on the side of the tank? You remember that? Um, the weight and the... The TW. The TW, the tank weight, the tear weight. So we'll put the tank on there, find the TW, Find the TW. Tell me what the TW is. It's on the side. It's on the side up here. Alex. See? Hey, hey. It's one of the stamp numbers on the side. Yeah. See him? Looking for a TW. I don't have to put a lot of weight on the scale. Look at the numbers over here. So here TW. Yep. 24, 26. Okay, so the tank weight's 24. So when we let it settle down, it's at 41. So 41 minus 24 is. Gotta do a little math. 24. Well, 40 minus 25 is 15. So. 14. And one up and one down. 17. So we got 17 pounds of refrigerant. I can. This weight capacity for this tank is nominally a 50 pound tank. So we can only add 40 pounds of refrigerant to it at the 80 percent rule. So we safe. 17 pounds. Less than 40. You good? Yeah. Yeah, we can have plenty of refrigerant into this tank. We gotta watch it. So the tank weight plus the capacity of the tank at 80%, add that together, 24, 40. We don't want this number going more than 64, p, uh, 64 pounds. So we'll watch that. And then what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take the service valve wrench and you're gonna front seat this one all the way. When you do that, the pressure's gonna build up and it's gonna pump the refrigerant in. When it does, after you front seat the valve and you see the needle start to go up, we're going to open the red gauge and the refrigerant is going to flow into the tank. If the pressure starts to get too high in the tank, we can cool it down in an ice bath. So go ahead and front seat this valve, turn it all the way forward. You might want to get in close for this and show the gauge. Uh, the other way. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Now the only thing I might have done different, you started to hit everything here. You could have knocked your, if you keep it up like this, you would have had more room, you know what I mean? More room to work with it and to adjust it and you wouldn't have been hitting the corner. Now watch the pressure here. We're going up. That's because all the refrigerant is trying to get through and it can't. So we're going to use, and you'll hear it blow through. Uh, let me purge the hose first before we open this. So I'm going to purge right here and you'll see a little bit of liquid come out after I do two Mississippi. There's the liquid and now the liquid will go into the tank and we can watch the tank number go up. As that's happening, the blue gauge is going down. When this gets down to 10 inches of mercury vacuum, I know we've gotten all the refrigerant out. So she's gotten, uh, look at that, we've got some tape there blocking our, our, our numbers. All right. It's getting there. Now I don't want to run the compressor too long in the vacuum because it'll overheat the windings. Remember those wires we showed you on the inside of the compressor? Those windings get cooled by the refrigerant, the cool refrigerant flowing over it. So if there's no refrigerant because we're pumping it all into the tank, it's not going to cool the windings. It's going to overheat and it could short them. Also drawing uh, the turn on the compressor in a deep vacuum could do that too. Alright, so that's it. We're good. She's not going down all the way, but that's good enough. Alright, we still have some refrigerant and liquid form in that hose. So there's nothing I can do about that. 
when we close off this gauge, because we still have some vapor in there, we've gotten most of the liquid refrigerant into the tank. Now the chances of getting some of the compressor's oil also went up, because the liquid refrigerant and the compressor oil mixes really well together. So it's better to recover it in the vapor phase, but it takes a long time. Liquid is a lot faster. So we just got the majority of the refrigerant out by pumping the liquid into the tank, but you're still gonna need to hook up the recovery unit to get the rest of the remaining vapor out. And there's gonna be a little bit of release here because there's no purge function on that, and there's nothing I can do about that release of refrigerant. All right, it's a little bit of R22 that's just gonna go into the atmosphere. Uh, that's called de minimis, okay? That's there's nothing you can do when you connect and disconnect the gauges. So now you're gonna redo it. So you're gonna connect up the recovery machine with the center hose going to the suction side, and you're gonna switch this switch to vapor because that's what we're gonna recover the rest of, the vapor. And then you're going to switch this over here to recover and hook one more hose to the tank there, which means you're probably going to have to move the scale in the tank right here next to it. And then we'll show you what that all looks like before we continue on with the recovery. Go ahead. So we got the recovery machine hooked up to our system. We got the gauges hooked up, the high and the low side of the system. The center hose is running to the suction port right here, and we're going to put it to recover vapor. If I needed to recover any more liquid, I could put it over there to liquid and we could get it back. We'll start out with liquid on the high side in case there's any liquid remaining. And then we're going to set this over here to recover. The tank's set up. We left this loose so we could purge. And then we got our scale watching the amount of refrigerant that goes in. There's also a diagram in the Modern Refrigeration book that also shows you that hookup. So we'll go ahead. Now you can go ahead and turn it on. We can, let, we can open up this valve here. Yeah, you can open up that valve. All right, and then you hear it hissing. Go ahead and tighten it up. Two seconds, open the tank. And if there is any liquid, it's coming out now through that high side left over. Eventually it's gonna get vapor. All the liquid will be boiled up and it'll get vapor. So now we went from system dependent recovery to self-contained. They call this self-contained because this has its own compressor. That's what you hear running inside and a fan motor with a condensing unit in the back. The condenser that changes the gas to a liquid before it puts it into the tank. So there's two types of recovery you did. And they're going to talk about both on the EPA certification when you come back to level two. One of them is using the systems compressor. Now if the compressor wasn't running, Definitely we need to get both high and low side connections to get the refrigerant out if you were using something system dependent, not the machine, system dependent where you're just using the compressor. If it's not operating, it's just the system pressure that's going to push the refrigerant out of the tank and to, out of the system into the tank, but it's not the same thing. So eventually she's going to get down, already sucked all the way out there, so we can go ahead and switch it to vapor, and I can also open up the blue gauge and get any remaining refrigerant. As soon as she gets down to 10 inches of mercury, this light will come on. If it was made before 1993, it would only have to get down to four inches of mercury because it's an older machine. But most of the machines now were made after 1993, and this one's gonna get uh, down to 10 inches of mercury here. So when that number gets down to 10 inches of mercury, that light will come on, we're good to go. So recovery is complete. We're gonna wait a few minutes to make sure the pressure doesn't go back up. If it doesn't, if we stay down at 10 inches in mercury on the blue gauge, which it looks like it's doing, then we'll go ahead and switch it to purge. Now don't forget this step, because look, it's still got 120, 130 pounds of pressure in there. That's a lot of pressure in here. We turn this off, turn this to purge. It'll use the system's gas to pump the rest of the refrigerant that was in that hose down to zero. Once she gets down to zero there, the system will come up, cut off again. It takes about 30 seconds or so. And that's it. And so we take a look. We got now 41 pounds, 13 ounces, where we started out with like, what, 40? I mean, I bet we barely added a pound of refrigerant into that. All right, so that's it. That's